Father in heaven, we believe that you are our shepherd and you will provide all of our needs according to your riches in glory. As we can see, the signs of these last days are ominous. Today, we cling to your promises because your promises are sure and will never fail. Encourage us in these last days of earth's history and prepare us is our prayer. Bless us now throughout this prophetic insights. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this prophetic insights where we analyze current events as they are fulfilling Bible prophecies. Safe to serve international, first time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this prophetic insights. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I came across an article several hours ago. And while praying and meditating on what to share with you for this prophetic insights, even though I tried to go to other articles as they are fulfilling prophecies from the Word of God, I kept on feeling impressed to share these two particular articles. So allow me to share with you what I have been impressed to promote at this time. We have come to the evening hour. Look at this, brothers and sisters. The headline reads, Anti-abortion lawmakers want to block patients from crossing state lines. Now, let me give you a few lines from this. Several national anti-abortion groups and their allies in Republican-led state legislators are advancing plans to stop people in states where abortion is banned from seeking the procedure elsewhere, according to people involved in these discussions. Now, who are one of these organizations in these Republican-led states? Look at this, my friends. The National Association of Christian Lawmakers. Don't forget that. All right. An anti-abortion organization led by Republican state legislators have begun working with the authors of the Texas abortion ban to explore model legislation that would restrict people from crossing state lines for what we know to be is infanticide. Feticide. Let me give you a few more lines, then made the application. Quote, just because you jump across a state line me, does, doesn't mean your home state doesn't have jurisdiction. It's not a free abortion card when you drive across the state line. And of course, the Biden Justice Department has already warned states that it would fight such laws, saying they violate the right to interstate commerce. Commerce. Lord have mercy. Commerce. <laughs> commerce, brothers and sisters. So, uh, feticide is now linked with commerce. Infanticide is now grouped in with commerce. What an argument from the DOJ. I digress on that point. You could read the article and see for yourselves the various arguments from both sides on either spectrum. You're calling me, you should be live for prophetic insights. Amen to that. Get back here. As I read this article, I'm not going to spend time to deal with right or wrong. Leave that with politicians. We are Christians, all right? But something was triggered in my mind. I wonder what that is. Friends, notice what came to my mind. A time when Seventh-day Adventists were unwelcome in Arkansas. Yes, the state of Arkansas. And Sabbath keepers, to a great extent, could not cross state lines. Mm -hmm. Do you see the connection here? If you don't see it, ask the Lord for Isalve. Look at this, my friends. This is from the Democrat Gazette, Northwest Arkansas headline, Baseball and Blue Laws. Allow me to read a few lines here. In 1885, the Arkansas 
legislature, our Lord's Sunday baseball, along with a host of other activities, Seventh-day Adventists who do not recognize Sunday as the Sabbath were especially unwelcome in Arkansas during the 1880s when more than 200 were prosecuted. Now notice, it goes on to say, Moreover, the conservative forces unleashed a torrent of bills to bolster the defense of the Sabbath, outlawing now golf, tennis, fishing on Sundays, but here's where I want to focus on. Forbidding the sale of gasoline on Sundays. Now watch this. Prohibiting men and women swimming together and prohibiting women's bathing suits which strike above the knee. In other words, dress reform. Beloved, you would have to be spiritually blind not to see the applications from that one paragraph because we are told that Sunday is going to be enforced in the land to combat what they call Immorality, that's what it says, brothers and sisters, in Great Controversy, page 587. Sunday for immorality. To combat immorality, Sunday for morality, it's coming. The conservative class. And remember, remember, many of those who, are, who called for Sunday worship, many of those who will call for Sunday worship, to combat climate change, the economic crisis, and immorality, all right? Many of these people are sincere in their Christian beliefs. Yes. But they, many of them do not see where this will lead to, what it will tend to. Yes. The prosecution and persecution of commandment-keeping people, Sabbath-keeping people. Imagine that, brothers and sisters. Just like many who call for Barabbas, crucified Christ. Why? We want to get rid of Christ so we can preserve our nation, so God can bless our nation. That's what they said in John chapter 11, verse 46 through verse 53, put him to death. It's coming again. Will history be repeated? It will be repeated, friends. A time period when Seventh-day Adventists were unwelcome in the state of Arkansas. Now we are seeing what led me here, just in case you missed it. Now, those who want to promote and those who want to have feticide and infanticide, they are unwelcome in various states. Rightly so in some regard but we're making the application here seventh-day adventists will be unwelcome in many of these states why do i keep on repeating myself so these points will leave an indelible mark upon your minds so what are we to do when that day comes what are we to do when that day comes look at this matthew chapter 10 watch the scripture now in verse number 23 of Matthew 10, it says, But when they persecute you in this city, flee you into another city. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel, the cities, the state of America, until the Son of Man be come. So this is a sign just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. The article triggered this point, brothers and sisters. By the way, who is the chief officer over every state in America? It's a governor, right? Look at verse number 16. I send you forth as sheep, lambs among wolves. Look at verse 17 and verse 18. You'll be brought before councils and before governors. That's the application. Verse 21. You shall be hated. By all nations, verse 22. And your friends and family members, they are going to put you to death. Flee to this city. Flee to that city. Even Christ had to flee to various cities. Even Christ had to do that. And hide in this city. Why? His time had not yet come. Mm -hmm. All right, friends. Notice here. And these are the states that comprise the Bible Belt. 
in the U.S. Look at them. Is Arkansas one of them? And look at also the above average, the average and below average. Look at that, brothers and sisters. Look at the dark green, <laughs> the dark green states. Well, I'm in one of them. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Now here comes the history behind what I just shared with you from church fathers, A.T. Jones, E.J. Wagner, as well as news reports of that time and this time. By the way, these reports are coming from actual statements and arguments, transcript of these arguments, oral arguments that A.T. Jones laid out before the Congress in Washington, D.C. Are you ready for this? When Seventh-day Adventists were unwelcome in many states. There it is. Speaking of the efforts to get the Supreme Court to come to the relief of the Seventh-day Adventists, not only in Arkansas, but in Tennessee and Georgia, who have been sent to the chain gang for doing secular work on Sunday. And the next two lines say that the states had control over morality in so many words the states and what did the supreme court just do hmm? whether you like it or not let's not argue about that right now but the supreme court sent that controversial issue back to the states uh-huh and remember sunday worship by law i believe begins at the state level that's what I believe, okay? I won't spend time to build that right now. Listen, not only in Tennessee, Arkansas, Georgia, look at Alabama. In Alabama, a Seventh-day Adventist was arrested. Unwelcome in Alabama, brothers and sisters. Now watch this. How much more of this should I give you? You could read the rest of that. Last sentence. Such are the Sunday laws in the United States, where church organizations, church organizations are working as never before to get control of legislative bodies. For what purpose? To secure more stringent, I love that word, stringent enforcement of Sunday observance. This is church controlling state power to end that morality. Do you remember that state? Legislature, uh, legislator over there in Arizona who says uh, it may be time, it's now time for us to be deliberating, enacting a bill, forcing every single person in that state to attend a church of their choice on Sunday. Now, why did I say the word stringent is important? In the book Maranatha, page 162 says, Human laws will be made so stringent that men and women will not dare observe the seventh day Sabbath for fear of wanting food and clothing. They will join with the world in transgressing God's laws. And brothers and sisters, what did I cover yesterday? Come off my screen. What did I cover yesterday? For prophetic insight, it was that congresswoman who was saying it's time for the church to control the state. And what are we told when that takes place, brothers and sisters, in America? The triumph of Rome in America will be sure. Do you see what time it is, my friends? And very, very soon, watch carefully, Seventh-day Adventists, I'm going to repeat myself again. Seventh-day Adventists are going to be unwelcome in state after state and then in the whole country and then country after country and then in the whole world but praise god then jesus will come and bring us to our rightful home heaven the new earth so my, by god's grace let us say together hasten the coming bring it on because once we have on the whole armor of god we have nothing to fear all right got that I digress. Let's move on here, friends. Here is E.J. Wagner. He's speaking of the I-R-L-A, first sentence. How they were protesting against the prosecutions and persecutions of Seventh-day Adventists in Alabama. Do you know what the state of Alabama put in print? 
and Tennessee, look at the red word. The people of Tennessee, like those of other states, by statute law, recognized the Christian Sabbath as God's holy day. And they declared that certain things must not be done on that day. Mr. Capps, a Seventh-day Adventist, did one of those things and thereby violated the law. So now he is unwelcome in this place. Throw him in jail. You could see the application, friends. These states are now saying we have statute laws as it relates to feticide and infanticide, and rightly so. But you know where these things are tending, brothers and sisters. Back to that news article. Watch carefully now, friends. It says, this is in Arkansas. How many Seventh-day Adventists were thrown in jail by the grand jury? It's all there, friends. You know what? You could pause the video and you could read that. All right? This is in Arkansas saying, We are honoring the Christian Sabbath, the first day of the week. That's the first sentence. And that, let me read the blue word. The effect of this change worked a hardship on a class of citizens in this country known as Seventh-day Adventists who observe the seventh instead of the first day of the week as the Lord's Day. And how many Seventh-day Adventists were prosecuted at the time of this writing, brothers and sisters? And this was A.T. Jones writing to the Justice of the Peace in Arkansas. Yes, yes, that's it, friends. And these people, red words, these people were the only ones that were indicted for Sabbath breaking during the two years, brothers and sisters, unwelcome in Arkansas, these states, two years. Look at this, friends. This is A.T. Jones before the Senate Committee in Washington, D.C. Here's a man leaving a northern state and coming to a different state, crossing state lines into Arkansas. And what happened? They threw that man into jail for Sabbath breaking. Are you seeing this, my friends? Let's move on from that. Arkansas was not alone in this. However, though it was worse there than anywhere else, I myself, A.T. Jones writing, with other brethren in California, had to send hundreds of dollars into Tennessee to support families of the brethren of our own faith there. It's all there, my friends. The history is there. And beloved, it's going to be repeated. Now, there's so much more I want to say here, but I have to touch on the second segment here. I don't want to keep it too long this, this evening. All right? When this begins... As we see the encroachment transpiring, the prosecution, the persecution, it's clear it's ominous. What are God's people told to do based on the scriptures? We must find ourselves in the rural districts. What's that? John, John chapter 11. In the rural districts, my friends. Yes, rural districts. In John chapter 11, verse 47 to verse 53, when they began to say Christ must be put to death. Verse 54 says, Christ therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country. Christ moved to another country. His time had not yet come for him to present himself, laying down his life. Country living brothers and sisters. It's also in Luke 21, verse 34 through verse 38. Country living, verse 37. Country living. And beloved, right now, because of homelessness, churches are now building tiny home villages for the homeless. Should Seventh-day Adventists take a leaf from this book? And make the proper application. Look at this, friends. Churches across the U.S. build tiny home villages amid worsening affordability crisis. And you could read 
the words on the left, on the right rather, AP News says churches are using spear land to build tiny home communities to accommodate the homeless on vacant plots near their parking lots and steepled sanctuaries. Congregations are building everything from fixed and fully contained micro homes to petite movable cabins and several other styles of small footprint dwellings in between. Next, church leaders are not just trying to be more neighborly. No, the drive to provide shelter is rooted in their beliefs. In their beliefs, in their beliefs, they must care for the vulnerable, especially those without homes. Pause right there. Do we have a doctrinal, biblical, spirit of prophecy belief system that we must care for the faithful, spiritual refugees? Yes. Psalm 68, verse 6, Jesus will put, yes, the solitary in homes. Galatians chapter 6. And verse number 10, we must care for everyone, but specifically those of the household of the faith. It's time. Now, they are building tiny homes in the cities. But what must God's people do? Build tiny homes if you can. A cabin here or there if you can. On your country property, the five keys of survival. Yes, conversion. Country living, amen. Food on your property, growing, storing up, amen. Number four, ministry, industry. Number five, the big five, my friends. Assisting others. That's it. It's right there, brothers and sisters. Beloved, there's so much more I want to say. Remember the book, Ministry of Healing? A chapter entitled, Help for the Unemployed and the homeless it's all there brothers and let me see something here it's all there hold on did i put it here yes there it is my friends page 183 how the unemployed and the homeless can be helped how next paragraph country living home on the land and that's why we're told in volume 7 page 56 those who are more blessed and more fortunate, God has blessed you. This is a way you can use your talents to assist another faithful, Sabbath-keeping, commandment-keeping individual and family. But may I qualify that. Be prayerful, fast and pray, and let God show you which family member, which person, which family to invite on your property. Be careful. But have an open heart. And the more you open your heart to assist others, the more God is going to bless you. Yes, he will. Like Noah, build the ark. Look at this. Let me finish up here, brothers and sisters. Do I need to read all of this? Do I need to? It's You could read the rest of that. Look at this, my friends. In the book Maranatha, Maranatha, page 184. Remember, just before the flood, in the days of Noah, Christ translated an individual without seeing death. His name was Enoch. As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be just before the second coming of Christ. Enoch is our experience as well. And we're told on page 184, of Maranatha, the chapter entitled, Work the Cities from Outposts, Rural Districts. Last paragraph, Enoch did not make his abode with the wicked. He placed himself and his family where the atmosphere would be as pure as possible. Then at times, he went forth to the inhabitants of the world with his God-given message. Listen to this now. After proclaiming his message, he always, what a phrase, he always took back with him to his place of retirement some 
who had received the warning. That's clear, brothers and sisters. That's clear. So be prayerful. I'm going to digress right there. Be prayerful, but have an open heart, open hand to assist somebody else. You don't have to have a lot to assist. Start with what you have and God will bless thereafter. Don't be selfish. Manifest the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And don't forget your victory gardens in the country. Country Living, friends. Adventist Home, page 137. Adventist Home, page 141. Who did Enoch bring back to his home? Those who received the message. That's key. Those who received the message. All right, friends. So if you're willing for God to bless you and you're not trying to live like the Jones, quote unquote, in the country, then God has a place for you. Remember, Revelation 12 Verse 14 and verse 6 is a promise you can cling to. Christ has a place for all of us. And as the economy gets worse, as a church, as faithful commandment-keeping people, Seventh-day Adventist Christians, let us do what God told us to do in assisting others. Resurrect, erect the ark of safety. For the coming time of crisis. By God's grace, I will see you tomorrow for Midday Power Surge, 12 noon Eastern Time. Maranatha.